Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to bonus weather video number three for this week and I'm going to get up on the pulpit and uh, make some comments about uh, something that I see occur far too often and, uh, and I just want to make you aware of it. You're probably already aware of it, uh, but uh, it's, it's just a, an example of what to look for and what to be very, very cautious about, okay? So let's go on ahead here. Now, I had a, a good buddy this morning who's a weather hobbyist send me uh, an article from a website uh, who is actually a degreed uh, meteorologist, and I'm going to leave it at that. My, my purpose here is not to come down on an individual because I don't know this individual. Uh, it could very well be that they're, you know, an incredibly upstanding citizen and just a wonderful husband and a wonderful father and all that kind of stuff. But what I am attacking here is an approach uh, that I think is not serving the public well whatsoever. So having said that, let's move on here. So I ask you the question, is this responsible reporting? This was the headline at the top of this person's website this morning, okay, or recently. El Nino advisory update November 2023. Very strong to historic event this winter. Now, we talked about this Oceanic Nino index that when it gets to 1.5 to 1.9, it's strong. Anything two or higher is very strong. And when you start getting above two and a half, then you're talking about you know, an historic event. So we're at 1.5. We're going up at a slightly slower rate than we were going up a couple of months ago. And all indications are right now is that we will probably peak in the strong category, not cross that threshold of 2.0, getting us into a very strong. But when you read this, very strong to historic event this winter, period. End of discussion, right? It's happening or it will happen. It's a definite. A little bit later down in the article on the website, it says, the latest update from NOAA on the El Nino advisory shows some solid evidence for the event to remain strong this winter and possibly, possibly remain active into the spring of 2024. That's true, okay? That's, and I'll, I'll show that to you in a second. That's exactly what they're saying. There is now discussion that this could become an historic event. Oh, discussion. Discussions like leave open many possibilities, right? But the headline made it sound like this is a done deal, okay? So we've gone from a done deal to there's discussion. Okay, let's move on ahead. Now, since he was quoting the Climate Prediction Center, which is a branch of NOAA, I thought it was only fair to go to the Climate Prediction Center's website and see what they're actually saying, okay? If somebody's going to represent or misrepresent what they're saying, then... You can go right to the source and judge for yourself. So here is the latest advisory that they put out on the 9th of November, just what, yesterday? Okay, uh, so this is very, very recent. I know the, the uh, typing there is, or the uh, text is too small to read, so I'm gonna just pick out a couple of key areas here. All right, based on latest forecasts, there is a greater than 55% chance of at least a strong El Nino greater than or equal to 1.5 degrees C in the Nino 3.4 region, which is the region right around the international date line, uh, persisting through January and March of 2024. So it's slightly better than flipping a coin that it's gonna remain strong through January to March of 2024, okay? But it is more likely than not likely. And since we've already crossed the threshold of 1.5 and we've been increasing steadily for several months now, it's reasonable to believe that, you know, we're going to stay in the strong category for a while. Now, there is a 35% chance of this event becoming historically strong, greater than or equal to 2.0 degrees C for the November to January season. Oh, well, gee, now 35%, last I checked, that's about one in three, okay? Uh, and last I checked in the dictionary, uh, a 33% chance or a 35% chance is not synonymous with the word likely or definite or is happening, okay? 33% is less than likely for sure, okay? Now, in the summertime, when you hear a 30% chance of a late afternoon or evening thunderstorm, a lot of times, what happens? Nothing, 
okay? At least not specifically where you are. Somewhere in the viewing area, there's probably a thunderstorm in progress, but more times than not, it doesn't come over your house or your golf course or whatever, okay? So that just as a, uh, a sort of a reference there. All right, so a few comments here. Attention-grabbing headlines are running rampant in our society today. Now, you could make the argument that this is nothing new. This has been going on since time began, uh, or at least since journalism began, and there's truth to that. Uh, but I think with now the advent of social media that this has become an epidemic, that you know whatever somebody can do to get your attention, they're going to do. So be sure to read the entire article, and I know that can be time-consuming at times, but see if the main content actually meshes with the headline, okay? Because a lot of times they don't. And this is how they can, the people that write these things can say, well, I told the truth. I told the truth in, in the main body, okay? I just didn't tell the truth in the headline. Or, or, or I made it sound a lot worse than it really was, okay? And th this is how they can justify what they do, okay? And of course, there is no justification for it. This person that runs this website, is a degreed meteorologist from a very, very credible institution, okay? Degreed meteorologists should not stoop to the level of clickbait journalism, especially when it comes to a science issue, okay? I have always looked at my job as, in a sense, representing the meteorological community, okay? And North Carolina State University has a very well-respected department in meteorology that was literally right across the street from WRL where I worked for years. And I got to know a lot of the professors over there very well. And I told them repeatedly, if you ever hear me say something on the air that is not scientifically accurate, do not sit around the water cooler or the coffee maker or whatever and discuss it amongst yourselves. Call me, email me, okay? Because the last thing I want to do is say something that is scientifically invalid because a lot of people were watching me, they don't have access to the public like I do, okay, or did. And so as a result, they can easily be misrepresented. And so I always told them, look, I'm trying to represent you as best I can. If I goof up and say something is scientifically invalid, tell me so I don't make that mistake again, or I can learn from that, from that error, okay? Um, so that's, that's something I've always felt very, very strongly about. The loudest voices many times misre <laughs> misrepresent what scientists are actually saying. And this is true with the climate change issue. If you went to an American Meteorological Society conference, as I did many over the years, and actually sit in on the presentations of the scientists that are writing these peer-reviewed papers, then there's no question that 99% of them would tell you that, yes, greenhouse gases are increasing, yes, it's because of human activity, and yes, the climate is warming because of that. But are they saying all the other things that some people out there with the loud voices are saying? Like, we're all going to die tomorrow. No, we're not, okay? Is there only one approach that we can take to try to either, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, to either adapt to this problem or to reverse the trend? No, there are many different ideas out there as to how to do that, okay? And so you have a certain group of people that are either uh, misrepresenting what the scientists are saying or they're putting words in the mouth of the scientists that are making these peer-reviewed papers available. And so, you know, they end up being, again, misrepresented. And it's, it's really a crime because the science is very, very solid, okay? And anybody that tells you that it's not is, again, one of these people that is people that are misrepresenting the science, okay? The science is very, very solid, okay? But the thing is, is that there are certain embellishments or exaggerations that are sometimes put forth by people that are not actually doing the research. And as a result, the scientists end up looking like they're saying one thing when they're actually not. I rely on peer-reviewed science, period. Now, I realize that not all of you have access to peer-reviewed science uh, like I do, okay? So I'm gonna make it my mission, if you will, to every time I see like a new peer-reviewed paper come out and I know that it's in that category, 
uh, that I can pass that information along to you so you know what the scientists are actually saying and not somebody who's either embellishing it or misinterpreting it or whatever, okay? So that's the end, uh, the end of my sermon, but uh, th this really is troubling to me. It's one thing for a non-scientist uh, to simply scream and yell on social media and try to you know, get attention, uh, but it's something very different when a degreed scientist is using this same approach to try to get attention. We can't tolerate that. We just cannot, okay? And so spread the word, <laughs> okay? All right, folks, that's bonus weather video number three for this week. Hope you have a wonderful weekend coming up, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. See you later, everybody.